So we're here at Coastal Magic in Daytona Beach with Gail Z. Martin, mm -hmm. who MM Romance fans may know as Morgan Bryce. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, thank you for having me. This is a blast. Absolutely. we've. I think we've all had a great weekend. Oh, it's been busy. It's been crazy. It's been wonderful. As, as any con is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How's your Coastal Magic experience been? Oh, it's been wonderful. I've met a lot of new people. I've seen a lot of old friends. I've gotten to talk with a number of authors and bloggers and podcasters, and, and that's that's kind of everything you want from it. Plus, it's on the beach. I mean, you know, in February and March. This is great. I'm thrilled. Right, because we know so many people came from the Arctic zones yes. of the country. Yes, and, and, and mine wasn't exactly Arctic, but it's, you know, mostly underwater at the moment. So I'll take, <laughs> I'll take what I can get. Now, this is not your first coastal. This is about my third, I think. Third? What is it about this con that keeps you coming back year after year? Uh, well, I know Jen from... Um, when she runs the urban fantasy track at Dragon Con. Mm -hmm. So we go back a ways. And she knew me and my urban fantasy pieces from there under the Gale name. And um, I came the first year with just urban fantasy. And then I started writing uh, the Morgan Bryce books last year. Had one book out uh, before Coastal last year. And so um, I love the mix of urban fantasy and romance and... Um, that you've got readers who are looking for a little bit of all of that. And mm -hmm. that kind of describes what I bring with me, a little bit of all of that. A little bit of all that. What's the essentially the origin story of Gail Z. Martin as writer that bridged into Morgan Bryce last year? Well, <laughs> therein <laughs> hangs a tale. <laughs> so uh, I came late to the party falling in love with the TV show Supernatural. Okay. And I didn't fall for it until halfway through season 11. <laughs> And then we binge watched 11 seasons in four months to be ready for the kickoff of season 12, as one does. And then it went on hiatus. And well, by the way, now I live tweet all the episodes. I run a, a fan group with over 400 people on Facebook. I've been to one of the conventions. I'm going to the DC convention later this year. I've been, a, I've been an invited guest blogger on Winchester Family Business Blog. I, yeah, I went, when I go down a rabbit hole. You are in the Winchester <laughs> business there. <laughs> I haven't fangirled this hard in a long, long time, and it's kind of wonderful. But it went on hiatus, and I started reading the fan fiction, which, again, I haven't done in ages. And after several hundred of those, I turned a corner and started reading Slash and said, this is really good stuff. And after I'd read a couple hundred of those, at least, <laughs> I said, I wonder what the non-fandom stuff that's, that's published is like. And I discovered Jordan Hawk, whom I had actually known under another name for over a decade, and said, oh, that's where you went. And <laughs> Charlotte Cochet and, and, you know, so many wonder... KJ Charles and so many wonderful people writing paranormal male male romance and I said you know my writer brain turned back on and said this is fun I want to do this too and so the only reason for the name change is that in my Morgan Bryce books which are urban fantasy male male paranormal romance there is explicit sex and in my Gail Z. Martin books which are epic fantasy urban fantasy steampunk comedic horror um, there are relationships, but there's no on-screen explicit sex. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't want someone who knew me under one name to pick up the Morgan, the, the romance and, you know, kind of have a heart attack because it wasn't what they were expecting. Right. And this way, it, it's really a branding thing. It's not a secret. It's all over all of my websites. It's, it's in all of my bios. It's just kind of a branding thing so that when you pick up the book, you know what you're getting. And the universes cross. Oh, yeah. The Gail Z. Martin and the Morgan Bryce universes. Yes, they do, because I can only keep so many universes straight in my head. <laughs> and so um, right now I have two series out with Morgan Bryce. There will be more, hopefully, by the end of the year. But um, the main character in the Badlands series, which is a psychic and cop in Myrtle Beach solving supernatural killings, he's the cousin of the main character in my Deadly Curiosity series, which is set in Charleston, South Carolina, and it's got a psychometric, someone who can tell the history and magic of objects by touching them, who runs um, an antique shop that's really a cover for a, a coalition of mortals and immortals that get cursed and haunted objects out of the wrong hands. So they're cousins, and, and um, they, you know, they contact each other through the books. They, they talk to each other. That, that's a lot of fun. Um, and Simon serves as a folklore consultant, mythology consultant to the monster hunters in all of my other books, who also show up in his books and the other books, you know, asking questions, helping each other out, going on hunts with each other. So um, in the Witchbane books, Seth, my main character there, will call Simon because he needs some folklore on whatever monster they're going up against. 
Um, and then, you know, Mark Boychek from the Spell, Salt, and Steel series, which is snarky monster hunting in the wilds of Pennsylvania. That's not a romance, but he's tied into this whole crew. And in the Night Vigil series, which is an ex-priest and a former FBI agent hunting demons in Pittsburgh, they actually show up as... Uh, major characters in Dark Rivers, which is the third Witchbane, the se- yeah, the third Witchbane novel, um, and they actually play a major part in that book. And it was funny because just for a variety of timing reasons, Dark Rivers came out with them as basically side characters in it before their own book came out. <laughs> but it's so much fun for me because um, I'm writing all the series, you know, continuously. So it it just seems right to me that they're all contemporary they might as well be crossing over with each other they would be in a a world where they were all doing these things at the same time and uh, it's less for me to keep straight and it it's kind of an easter egg because if you've read one series and then you see the character pop up you go i see what you did there and then there are some in jokes for people who have read Mm -hmm. you know the series that like simon doesn't know just how much cassidy's doing in the supernatural world um, he just thinks she gets rid of haunted objects. There's a whole big side of this. And Cassidy doesn't really realize how much he's doing. And at some point, they'll find out. And that'll be fun. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, can you tell I'm having a good time with Absolutely. this? Absolutely. I love the enthusiasm for that. And if I if I heard all that right, it's one universe and multiple series that it is. interconnect. It is. And there will be, um, there'll be a new series, Treasure Trail. Yes, I know. Uh, and it is, <laughs> it's set in Cape May, and it'll tie into the same same series. Um, and there'll be, um, I've also done uh, Steampunk under the Gale name, uh, co-written with my husband Larry. And we'll have, um, I'll have Morgan Bryce Steampunk Paranormal Historical Series out, hopefully later this year, that will tie in to that series. Um, and there's uh, my Assassins of Landria series, which is, buddy flick epic fantasy kind of epic fantasy without the epic length it's it's <laughs> two smart mouthed assassins and their valet who break all the rules for the right reasons there will be a morgan bryce spin-off series set in kind of an epic fantasy series because i'm just having too much fun to quit is there like one master list of recommended reading order between all these <laughs> Somebody just asked me that in my World of Morgan Bryce reader group. And I said, okay, guys, listen up. Here it is. And I walked everybody through it. And, and you know, here's here are the way they kind of intercut with each other. Uh, so that that's actually posted in my Worlds of Morgan Bryce Facebook group. What's the reaction been from Gail Martin fans, Gail Z. Martin fans? Because we should specify that Gail Martin writes inspirational books. And not me. Not me. Not Gail Z. Martin. So make sure you click the right thing on Amazon. The Z is important. (laughs) Yes. What have the reaction been to the Gail Z. Martin fans as characters that they know and love come now under Morgan Bryce for those tales? Is is the crossover good and the reaction good? It has been. Um, You know, I I didn't know if the two reader groups would would intersect. I didn't know what the Venn diagram was going to be with that. And so I just said, hey, guys, I'm also doing this over here. And they and there was this small stampede that went, oh, really? Wow. And these Gale readers <laughs> went over to the Morgan stuff. And then after I'd had a couple books out as Morgan, I said, and you guys do know that I write this other stuff over here as Gale. It doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have the sexy times, but it's got, you know, relationships and all this magic. Oh, really? And there was this small, <laughs> and it's like, well, okay. And so that's been really gratifying. I mean, you know, not every book is, is everybody's cup of tea. Sure. And not all of my urban fantasy readers read the steampunk or read the epic fantasy and vice versa. Um, so, so not everybody who was reading the Gale stuff read all of the Gale stuff. Mm-hmm. I get that. That's fine. Um, but it, it's been really fun. And other people have said, you know what? I've never read that, but I like all your other books, so I'm going to try it. And now they've discovered a whole new genre. Mm-hmm. Which has is populated, as you noted, with other authors they may branch off to eventually. And and you know, I'm I'm huge on cross promoting other authors. So I tell my fans all the time, you know, I write pretty quickly. My my goal's kinda of getting, you know, a book or so a month done. But I can't publish them that fast. So by the way, while you're waiting on my next book, here are all my favorite authors. And mm-hmm. and I love promoting other people's new releases and talking about them. 
I do my best to get to know other authors because at the end of the day, it, it's a very small world. And, you know, I've had my readers tell me that they read 100 to 200 books a year. Now, I write right. fast, but I don't write that fast. <laughs> right. So they could read all of my books under both names twice and still have an awful lot of reading time left. So, you know, it's, it doesn't do me any harm whatsoever to send them off to all my friends and, and all the books I love reading when mm-hmm. I'm not writing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's my idea of a good time. Let's talk a little bit about The Rising, which okay. just came out in February. It's the second book in the Badlands series. Mm-hmm. Well, kind of 2.5 or, or sort of 3 because there is the novella um, Lucky Town in between there. And that's kind of important for sequence because that's actually also sort of a Thanksgiving and Christmas novella. I, I noticed when I was researching that it was a Thanksgiving. I always like seeing the holiday stuff get tossed in where mm-hmm. it can go just because it's like, oh, Christmas moment, you know, oh, with holidays. <laughs> with what? With ghosts, with, with ghosts. supernatural creatures. <laughs> you know, that's just part of the package with me. So what is happening in The Rising? Well, you've got a huge storm coming in. You've got vengeful pirate ghosts. You've got a haunted mansion with some dark family secrets, because this is, after all, the Deep South. And Simon and Vic are doing their best to try to figure out how all of that, or if all of that, has anything to do with this series of they appear to be suicides, but they're locked room suicides, so the families don't think they are. They And Simon's contacted the ghosts and gotten enough from them to say no they're actually murders made to look like Mm -hmm. suicides so now they're trying to get ahead of a killer and they're not sure whether that killer is alive or dead and there's another whole situation going on with the haunted mansion that is you know gaining intensity and somebody's gonna die And then somebody, um, there are three antique knives, and they start showing up in people's backs. (laughs) And (laughs) the body count is rising, the dead are rising, and the storm is rising. And Simon and Vic are just trying to stay one step ahead and and try to, you know, cut down on the body count Mm -hmm. and and stay alive themselves. Just a little bit to do. And yeah, they've also just moved in with each other, so they're still getting used to each other. And, and Simon's adjusting to the fact that, you know, he's, he's kind of coming face to face with the reality that Vic's a cop and cops have a dangerous business. And he's in love with this guy who might not come home one night. And, mm-hmm. and how does he deal with that? And Simon, who, uh, Vic, who's the cop, is really gaining an appreciation for just how much. Simon's psychic abilities with, with um, you know, precog and visions and his ability to talk to the dead and channel the dead as a medium, what those risks are and uh, what kind of danger that puts him in. And so they're, they're both kind of coming to terms with this next step in their relationship, which is a blast for me. That's awesome. And in the Badlands world, Morgan Bryce now has a first audiobook. Yes. As Badlands comes out uh, on March 12th. Yes, and I'm really thrilled with that because all six of the Morgan Bryce books have been sold under contract to Tantor Audio. Mm-hmm. So, um, Cale Williams is the narrator, and uh, so it's been a lot of fun to work with him, and I'm really thrilled seeing the books you know, come to life in a whole new way. And I'll let you in on a secret. Badlands, Lucky Town, The Rising, the two short stories that are on Prolific Works are Cover Me and uh, Restless Nights. If you didn't pick up on it, Vic is a big Springsteen fan. So I've had some reviewers go, it's called Badlands, but nobody goes to South Dakota. No. (laughs) Vic is a a big fan of the boss. That's awesome. So (laughs) So there's a playlist in here to be made from these titles. Yes. And the next one is Loose Ends. <laughs> <laughs> Did you also do audio as Gail Z. Martin? So this is just an expansion of the whole universe into audio? or So there's a funny story with that. Yes. Uh, almost all of my Gail Z. Martin books have been done on audio. Either by the publishers when I was working with... I had worked with a, uh, Orbit Books, which is a big New York publisher. I would worked with Solaris Books, which is a big London publisher. Either as part of the package when they were publishing me, or since we've gone largely indie, except for three series we're doing with Falstaff books, um, I, I wasn't, um, I was just about to dip my toe in the water of doing my own stuff, 
you know, with, with hiring talent through ACX. Well, um, then Recorded Books came to my agent and said, oh, cool, new stuff. And we did contracts. I'm cool with that. That's easier for me. Mm-hmm. Well, I might not have mentioned to my agent that we were starting this whole Morgan Bryce new genre. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see how it was going to go. And then Badlands got that nice little orange banner, number one in gay, gay fantasy, and hung there for a while. And Recorded Books found me and said, hey, by the way, Morgan, we'd really like to talk to you about doing a contract. So I go back to my agent. I was actually at GRL when this happened. and said, hey, Ethan, guess what? I started writing these other books, and this one's at number one in a category. And Recorded Books uh, sent me this note. You might want to follow up on it from there. <laughs> And, you know, when you're a, he, I, I absolutely love my agent. I've been with him for 12 years. He's a wonderful, wonderful uh, business partner. And uh, he never missed a beat. And so that's how we ended up with all six Morgan Bryce books under contract. Um, so they, they will all be coming out. And, yeah, so all of my Gail Z. Martin stuff except for, I think there are two books, uh, three books, um, that currently aren't in audio or in production to be in audio. So if you like audiobooks, um, you can find all the flavors. You can binge. Yes. Binge on the audio. And some of those epic fantasies are binge. They go on for a while. <laughs> so you've been writing a while now. What got you in to taking the leap to going to being a published author? What was the... What was your what was your origin as a writer? <laughs> well, I've been published for twelve years, but as I tell people, I've been writing forever. Um, I wrote my first story when I was five. My favorite TV show when I was a preschooler was Dark Shadows. I don't know what my mother was thinking, but that was my favorite. You know, other little kids get cardboard boxes and they make them into race cars and planes. <laughs> I made mine into a coffin and rose out of it. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and the first story I ever wrote when I was five. I couldn't write because I couldn't spell yet, but I had my I dictated it to my grandmother. It was about a vampire. <laughs> the, what did grandmother think about that? You know, they just kind of went with it. Um, and, and really, the, so none of this should surprise anybody. <laughs> um, and so I always loved books. I always loved stories. And when I was about 14, I kind of thought about, well, where do books come from? Will people write them? And I'd always thought about those author people who write these books. <laughs> In 14-year-old kind of thinking, I thought, you know, the people writing books now won't live forever. Someday they'll be dead. And if new people don't start writing books, there won't be any more books. So if regular normal people can write books, I could be a writer. And at 14, I decided I I wanted to grow up to write books. So I um, majored in medieval history in college so I could write epic fantasy books because I wanted to do that. And then I knew I'd need a side gig because I didn't want to do the starving in a garret thing. Right. So I no got, one does. <laughs> so I got an MBA and worked in corporate marketing as a side gig for 17 years. Some people wait tables. I wrote annual reports. I still maintain that the annual reports were some of my best fiction. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I did that and then finally left corporate. And all the while, I, I started writing my first book, The Summoner. And I had written fan fiction back in high school. Um, and that was before people passed it around on the internet. We'd go to a convention, everybody'd sit on the floor in a hotel room, and we'd just t- take one, pass it down, read it, and, and they'd be handwritten, they'd be, you know, Xeroxed. Um, so I, I really fell in love with writing, and I also found out I could entertain people because people would start pestering me, you know, when are you going to write the next one? And, and the first full length novel I ever wrote was my friends came to me and they knew I, I wrote all this stuff back in college, and um, they said, you know, we don't want to wait for Return of the Jedi to come out. We want you to write us the next installment because we don't want to wait for the movie. So I did, and that's that taught me I could write a full-length novel. And to this day, there are six people in the world who like my version better than George Lucas's. So nice. There, yeah, six people. Uh, but it taught me I could I could make people happy with writing, and I could finish a project, and I could do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I came up with the idea for the main character in um, The Summoner, which was my first book in the Chronicles of the Necromancer, when I was 19 in college. It only took me till I was 45 to get published. You know, this is what it takes to be an overnight success. Yep. Um, and I would work on the book, and life would happen, and I went to grad school, and life would happen, and I got married, life would happen, children, moves, all this. And the book would come out, and I'd work on it, and I'd go back in a drawer. And then finally, when I left corporate, long story, mergers and acquisitions, I said, you know, if I'm going to do this, I need to do it now. 
And so I dusted it off, cleaned it up, and sent it off to a publisher, and um, it was the right time. Magic happened. I got the agent, I got the publisher, and the main character and the concept had been around so long that at this point, my children considered, <laughs> my daughter told me she always thought of Triss, the main character in The Summoner, as their invisible older brother, because I always talked about him. <laughs> um, so it's been around that long. Uh, but yeah, pretty much always. And and I'm just so happy and so thrilled and, and so lucky and so blessed to be able to do what I love doing for a living. Mm-hmm. How much did Triss change and the summoner change from essentially what you'd started with at 19 to when it got published? Oh, hugely. There was pretty much the name and, <laughs> and, and a little bit of character description. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Not only did my lens and perspective change growing up, um, but through all of the many, many, many revisions, I finally learned how to write. <laughs> and so it was, it, the plot changed, everything really about it changed except the character and, and the description. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, there's definitely a thread there. You've got all these series and the interlocking universe. What's your process for, for deciding I'm going to write this book now, then this one, then this one, and these, char- these characters are going to get a Morgan book, these characters are getting a Gail Z. Martin book. How does, how does all that sort itself out? Um, well, some of it is all the series are um, ongoing. At least they will be for the next year or so. There are um, I've got one last book to bring out in one of the epic series, one last book to bring out in another epic series, um, I'm bringing, I'm starting up um, the next six books in the Chronicles series because that had kind of come to an end. Um, I have, in some cases, I have the story arc in my head already for where this series is going. Other series are open ended. Um, but the ones I'm actively writing, I try to bring a book out every year or at least close to every year um, because I know what it's like as a reader to be mm-hmm. waiting for that next book to come out. And I don't want to keep people waiting any longer than I have to to bring out a good quality book. Um, so that's really it. I, I have a mental list of I'm going to write this first and this and this and this. here's my lineup for the year. I'm already behind and it's beginning of March. Um, but that's okay. And some of it's a sequence of, okay, I've already promised audio, so I need to move that up in the queue because they're going to want the audio sooner rather than later. Um, we're doing three series with uh, Falstaff books and so there's a little more of a schedule there but mostly it's me in my head saying I want to make sure nobody waits more than a year for the next book in the series and with the Morgan Bryce books I want to bring books out pretty much every two months um, because romance readers read very very quickly Mm -hmm. do you have a big like universe bible so you know what's happened in all these books or is it all in your head and a lot of it's in my head, and then my, my husband uh, also works full-time in the business with me writing, and, and behind the scenes, he's my best first editor, and he does all the royalty spreadsheets, and, and more and more, we've been at it now for eight years, um, since he left corporate, more and more, um, everything's kind of co-written to an extent behind the scenes, some series more than others, um, so... <laughs> He got tired of me saying, okay, who's taller again? Uh, what color are his eyes? Or, and so now he started the series Bible on that. Um, and, and that's good. But I'm not... Some people have binders and binders and binders of world building and all that. Not, that's generally not me. I don't do the file cards. I don't do the binders. I can keep most of that in my head. But, you know, remembering who's taller, that, that sometimes trips me yeah, up. That's, yeah. that's fine. I, those... Personal characteristics. Right. And you, you don't want it to, say, flip back and forth from book to book in the same series. Hey, wait, I thought you were taller in the last series. <laughs> wait, your eyes were green over there. What just happened? You've mentioned a couple times now your husband. Uh, what's it like to co-write with him? How did that how did that come about, and was that an easy partnership to have? or? Well, um Obviously, he knew about the Triss thing when we got married, so he kind of knew a little bit what what we were getting into, and we've been married for 31 years. So um, when he was still in corporate and I had left corporate and was writing, um, 
he really didn't have time to come in on anything until like maybe the next to the last draft and, and give me an extra set of eyeballs on it. Um, but he always wanted, he, he was ready to get out of corporate and he always wanted to get into the writing piece with it. Um, and he's very talented in his own right and I think we'll be seeing some more things coming out from him um, very soon. Um, so he kind of eased into it, you know, it, it went from corrections to suggestions to being very active with brainstorming up front and character generation and plot generation to going through a draft and making revisions and after all this time we can't tell each other's voices apart when that happens and on the books that have both of our names on the cover um I may do the first draft, but then he'll come in and, and do expand and, and maybe redo whole sections, and it all blends. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's what happens after 32 years. Right. Does it start out as the idea that you're going to write together, or does it, is it more he's done so much in the book that his name then goes on it? Part of that is also branding, because some genres... Um, do better with a male name on them. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are just because we wanted both names on them. Um, and he's, he's um, doing more and more that is just him. Um, and I'm absolutely encouraging that, but he's not quite at the point to launch that yet. Mm -hmm. So right now it, it's all um, very much jointly done. And uh, a lot of a lot of whether or not it's the name on the front is is uh, branding, and that makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. certainly in the fantasy and sci-fi area, that male name can particularly in sci-fi. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there there are a small bunch of us that are female <laughs> authors in fantasy, uh, the the intrepid crew, um, but it is still very much you know an old boys club, and uh, that's changed a little bit, not tremendously much. But it, it's, you know, you roll with it. And, and I've had, you know, I've had a wonderful run with sci-fi and fantasy. It's not over yet. I'm still doing quite a bit there. And uh, I love that side of my life. And I, I love those people. Um, it, it's just a lot of things work a little differently than they do in the romance side. Mm -hmm. How was it different, other than obviously putting romance mm -hmm. into the books, coming over to MM Romance, meeting those readers getting to know them as they know as they got to know your work um in a lot of ways it really wasn't different and i'd had uh, a male male couple that plays a very important role in the deadly curiosities books all the way through and everybody you know loves tegan anthony um so to an extent the morgan bryce books are well what if tegan anthony had been the main characters in deadly mm. curiosities and the books were as much about their relationship evolving as it is about all the the magic and supernatural stuff so in that sense, it wasn't that big of a stretch. Um, and I'd already read all these other authors whose work I really loved. And um, when I went out to my, my readers and said, hey guys, I'm gonna be doing this new stuff. Um, who wants to be a beta reader? Who wants to be an ARC reader? <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of, of uh, readers who, who wanted to come in and do that. And um, so really, it, it was, it's a, been a wonderful way to meet a whole lot of new, fantastic people. Um, but in many ways, it isn't that different from, you know, the, the readers that I was working with before, because there's been so much crossover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else is coming immediately for you? So, you know, we talked about <laughs> the rising coming that was out in February, and we've got Badlands on audio in March. What's, what's like the next you know, three to six months looking like for your releases on, on both sides of the fence. Sure. Well, um, we're working on the next Spell, Salt, and Steel, which is that snarky monster hunter in Pennsylvania. So that there'll be a new novella out in that. Uh, a new Deadly Curiosities is coming up shortly. And a new um, Assassin's Honor, that's that uh, smart mouth assassins um, breaking the rules. And then um, the, um, the next Witchbane book, uh, which is uh, Flame and Ash is coming out. That one's going to be set in Boone, North Carolina, because each book in that series moves around. And then the uh, Treasure Trail, first book in that series, is set in Cape May, and that's, uh, again, another Morgan Bryce. And um, then uh, at that point, I'm probably going to have to tackle The Reckoning, which is the 
third and final book in the Darkhurst um, epic fantasy series, which is Medieval Monster Hunters. Um, and uh, that's one of those big fat fantasy books that is, you know, uh, a doorstop. Yeah, but, the ones you could club people with if necessary. Yes, yes. Slight doubles as a cudgel or a weapon. <laughs> uh, and that's the last one in, in that series. So that's, that's kind of, you know, my dance card for the next yeah. six months. You're busy. Four months, yeah. Well, I <laughs> wouldn't want to do anything else. And what's the best way for people to keep up with both of your pen names? Okay. Uh, well, my um, I've got my Morgan Bryce website, which is morganbryce.com, and my galezmartin.com. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook as, um, well, Gail Z. Martin. But you can find my um, Winter Kingdoms uh, Facebook page and my Worlds of Morgan Bryce uh, Facebook group. And I'm on Twitter as at Gail Z. Martin and at Morgan Bryce Book. Fantastic. We'll put all that good stuff in the show notes <laughs> so people can go click on all of it. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you for having me. This, is all, this has been a blast. 